This week's Into the Wilderness podcast. I bet you weren't expecting this show. This is this we, we weren't expecting. We this weren't show. expecting. We've, <laughs> we've 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 slotted it in between the two. It's uh it's very short and sweet because it's on one very specific particular topic uh, that is has been in the news in A the lot. last uh, two weeks, two three weeks. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, you've 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 more than likely seen it online, especially if you're in the UK. In fact, probably only if you're in the yeah, UK. Yeah, if you're out with the UK, you probably have no idea what we're away to talk about, but you're away to be educated in it. You are. Uh, the sort of headline grabbing aspect of it has been uh, Wales bans pheasant shooting. That's that's what I've seen kind of banded around. And uh, there is an, an element of truth to that it is in reference particularly to shooting rights on public land. And we thought that the best thing to do, like any of these conversations, is to try and have something which is level-headed and fact-based. So we have on this week's show Sue Evans, who is the director of the GWCT in Wales. And she was kind enough to come on, give us a little bit of the background, what's actually happening on the ground there, uh, the meetings that are taking place and what the impacts are of the decisions that have been taken by the Welsh Government. Yep. That's... So, um, we're probably going to follow this up, I think, um, at some point well, in the future, think, but this uh, is a this is a good starting point to let everybody know exactly what's happening out with of all the Facebook ranting. Yeah, because it's easy to get carried away. It's easy to get carried away, and secondly, I am almost a hundred percent convinced. Whenever uh, someone shares a title of a headline, i.e., um, shooting is banned in Wales, that a good sixty to seventy percent of the people don't even read the article within, and then they no, just no, comment no. based on the based on the, the title. On the title. <laughs> And that's where all of their factual opinion comes from, is the, the title. So, I mean, it is very serious what's happened there. I mean, the implications for it being set as a, as a precedent across the rest of the country is quite worrying. But listen to the show, because it, it gives real context as to what's happening there. And then you can, then you can rant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a couple of short things before we get into the interview, uh, which is that the competition from the podcast a week ago is still running and will run for another week until our normal show, which is out every two weeks. And that was to win a uh, CZ Firearms doormat. Yes. And the picture that is up on social media has my little puppy, Torrin, sitting beside the mat. So if that's not a reason to give it a share, I don't know what is... I heard a lot of entries again. Yes, we have. Um, and like we said, the next show, because we weren't expecting this one, uh, will be in a week's time, about a week's time. And we can even tell you what's going to be on. Yeah, it can tell you exactly. It's, well, you can tell, though, since you've just edited I've the whole thing. I've just edited the whole thing, and it's all about Atlantic salmon. And we go through good depth, some no. really good depths. We talk about all sorts of things, from life cycle to the river, all the way to the, the seas, and talking about how... Uh, they are finding out where they're going because the population decline is quite worrying. It's over two hours long, so it's, it's like, over two. Hours. Yeah, it will be, I don't re- let that put you off. Though. I rec. I mean, we've had longer podcasts than we that, have, yeah. and, uh, but it is brilliant from start to end. Um, we are, we've got two fantastic guests on um, who you'll be introduced to in, in the next show, and we haven't done a lot of fishing podcasts, which is no. strange because we both love to fish, and I was fishing a long time before I was probably hunting. Not a long time, but I was definitely fishing independently before we were hunting hunting independently. I promise you, even if you are not into fishing at all, you will learn something from this. It's, it's not because really it's that not, much it's, to do with it's fishing. It's not actually it? about fishing. No, it's to it's do with agriculture. Agriculture. Yeah. And, and I've I learned a lot from this and talking about the technology and how we're looking at different species. And I guarantee from this, I was actually just thinking about this. You know, if they f- succeed in figuring out what is going on in at least one aspect with the Atlantic salmon, can you imagine how they can apply that to other species to find out what's what's going on with them? It is no. It was, it was inter- It was a super interesting conversation to be had, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing that podcast. Actually, I see the farmers are out in force with potatoes right now. Yeah, I don't envy them today. <laughs> it's pissing down with rain. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, they might have to stop if they, if they want to avoid getting bogged down in some of the fields. I, I saw them even in this weather when I just drove out the yeah, no, they're, they're They're going hard. Middle of the tatty holidays? I can actually walk down my road and collect enough potatoes that have fallen off the back of yeah. tractors that I wouldn't need to have <laughs> potatoes for the next month. <laughs> well, we're lucky that we have quite a good supply of potatoes from Dad. Yeah, we do, yeah. Yeah. Well, we will let you... Is there nothing else? Brian? No, I, oh no, there was one other oh, thing, one other. and that was that we, just a couple of days ago, oh, yeah, um, of course. put up the uh, a sale on our website. So we are in the process. In fact, Beth is sitting just a few meters away from us in the office, busy working out some new designs on brand new products that have never been on the, the shop before. So that's all coming together right now, but in preparation for bringing all of that in, we've done a sale on... Pretty much, all, we need, we need almost room. all of the products that are on there, but particularly the t-shirts. We're, we're actually selling out of um, some sizes. Well, yeah. I think we've sold out of quite a number of things. The older designs, some of the sizes and the new designs have already gone. Um, I know that there is one adventure uh, camp mug left. <laughs> so yeah, things are actually selling very fast. So go and check it out. I mean, some of them are up to fifty percent off. And so. Modern Huntsman Volume One is also selling very fast, and I can see that our stocks are are getting low again already. Well, I'm pretty sure this has been since we recorded the last podcast, but it's actually been printed now. Volume Two it has been printed. It, it exists. So you if you can... if you have pre-ordered Volume Two, is now physically there in the United States, and we will be looking to bring it over. Well, it's just as soon as as, as soon as possible. The, our batch is ready, and that's it. And then it'll be shipped over. And yeah, that was that was the only other thing I needed to say. So with that, enjoy uh, this intriguing conversation with Sue on a very very important topic. Sue, welcome to the Into the Wilderness podcast. Thank you very much for coming on today. We want to speak to you about what's been happening in Wales. Uh, for most people who have been keeping up to date with social media, they will have seen the kind of the headline titles of you know the Welsh ban pheasant shooting. I realise that there's a bit of depth to it, and that there's also a little bit of a history, and you've been involved in that. So I was just wondering if you could kind of take a step back from from the headline grabbing and just paint a picture of what has been happening and how, how we've got to what we've seen come out in the last two weeks? Okay, well, it started, well, it goes quite a long way back, I suppose, but it, the basis of it is that we provide ev- provided evidence to a review in at Easter, not this year, 2017. That, e- that evidence was highly acclaimed and NRW, Natural Resources Wales, came back with a consultation paper, and they said that the evidence, in particular from GWCT, was very highly regarded. And the conclusion at the end of it all was that shooting actually provided benefit to the two acts that we are trying to work to in Wales, the Environment Act and the Future Generations Wellbeing Future Generations Act in Wales. And because of the delivery of those objectives, that they would support the continuation of shooting on public land in Wales. And that was what the discussion was about, was purely public land in Wales. Then as a bit of a curveball, the Minister for Environment, uh, Hannah Blevin, sent a letter to the Chief Executive of NRW saying that Welsh Government uh, effectively does not support commercial shooting on NRW land, on public land. And it all kicked off after that, effectively. The NRW board officially stated to start with that as they had supported the consultation response uh, along the lines that the evidence proved that we should continue with shooting because that is what would be best for the country, um, they felt that this was quite a difficult one and put them in quite a difficult position as an evidence-based organisation. Um, and really, it, it's got more complicated from there in the point that NRW have now come back, their committee, and said, well, as landowner, the minister is perfectly entitled to tell us that she does not want shooting and the leases resumed on NRW land. So we will no longer be giving any shooting leases on public land. OK. Um, what sort of period of time has that discussion uh, been had over? Um, the letter came out about July time, I remember. Um, let's have a look. I've got the 
the ministerial correspondence. Yes, the 9th of July it came out. Um, and they had their meeting at the end of September, the NRW board, which was a second meeting after having received the letter. And at that meeting, they have decided that they will not put out or grant any more shooting leases on publicly owned land. So our... it gets quite... I'm sorry, carry on, Sue. No, well, I, I was just going to say that it, it, it's going to get a little bit confusing because in Wales uh, um, we have the situation that there's quite a lot of shooting rights retained over public land where they actually sold the land rights and trees have been planted in most instances, but uh, the shooting rights have been retained. And we've got other situations where NRW have long leases, sometimes up to 999 years leases, purely for growing trees and therefore the landowners still have the shooting rights over those so the public will see shooting continuing on the public estates as they see them because they don't understand the land tenure that underlies it so it, it's uh, it's uh, going to be quite interesting to see how it all pans out effectively and can you flash out uh, a little bit more about the reasons why this action has been taken and the arguments that have been placed forward for ba essentially uh, banning shooting or not renew uh, by by virtue of not renewing the the leases on public land. Well, the minister has basically said effectively that she does not like shooting and doesn't believe that the wider public likes shooting. There has been a YouGov poll where I think they reckon that about seventy four percent of that, when asked, would um, effectively do you support shooting? The majority, 74% came back saying no. But what we found with the GWCT is that when we speak to people, uh, have a couple of hours out on a moor or out on a shoot, those from the local area and wider field and general public, they, once they get an understanding of the good that is being done by the shooting community and the way that it all evolves, they feel quite differently about it. So the minister has got a very personal opinion here which I think is going to make it very difficult because it's morals and ethics, but on her basis. Mm, yeah, it's 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 strange. We're we're seeing something in Wales now, which we've we keep kind of a, a tab on what what's happening in a global context, and this kind of thing with politicians pushing forward an agenda which might be more based on a personal viewpoint or even or even polls that maybe are not necessarily particularly well sampled. Uh, is is happening again and again across the world. I was w wondering if you could elaborate a little bit about the work that you did through the, the GWCT to provide evidence of the benefits of shooting on this public land so that people can understand that it, it's more than just removing um, sort of people's enjoyments of being able to go, go shooting on on these permissions. Well, as you know, as a science-based organisation, we've got 80 years of science, which backs up the fact that as long as the code of good practice for shooting is abided by and that people are responsible, that shooting provides a great deal of basically um, public benefit, um, almost, you know, what, what people have been looking at as payment for ecosystem services. These guys that have been out there shooting have been providing an additional uh, conservation and biodiversity benefit that has been paid out of a private purse. And um, we've been, we put forward um, a paper which you can see on our website. If you have a look on the GWCT Wales website, you can read the paper that we put forward. And it is effectively pointing out just what the, the value to biodiversity in those areas, whether it's the tree planting um, or the bird feeding over winter and the effect that that has, the positive effect that all that delivers. Has there been any indication as to what the Welsh Government are going to do to try and compensate for the fact that people won't be doing this anymore in terms of habitat and biodiversity? No, there has been absolutely nothing back from that point of view at all. But it's actually the reality, as I understand it, is that we're talking about three leases. And this is why, in a way, it could be perceived that this is rather a storm in a teacup in that it will affect three groups of shooting syndicates. Um, 
So it's a tricky one, but there was actually potential. And I understand there was a study done to look at the potential for more shooting in Wales and the revenue that that would have brought into the public estate, as well as the fact of the additional biodiversity that could have been provided through that. And nobody has really talked about that or looked into that in any detail. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So it is a fairly small number of people who will be directly affected, but the precedent that it might set could yeah, be quite worrying absolutely. across other other parts of the United Kingdom. Effectively, that that is our biggest concern, is that this seems to be such a um, completely flippant behaviour by a minister in that it is purely done on a whim without any real evidence, whereas the real evidence has actually provided that it fulfills all the policy requirements in Wales You know, sustainable management of natural resources is what we're all talking about. We're all talking about trying to produce better environmental and biodiversity outcomes. And it was proven that this is one way of doing that. And yet she has completely gone the opposite way on a whim, as it would seem, because there's no hard evidence to support the fact. And the comments of what she's saying is that morally and ethically, that, that she doesn't like it. So that there has been there's been nothing presented that shows that the activities that were going on is detrimental in any way to the wildlife or the environment. Um, I think right at at the beginning there were some photographs that were put out there by League Against Coral Sports, I think, um, and there were some photos of some pheasants caught in wire. So these things which there are photos of something, whether they came from the NRW estate, but of course, from a GWCT point of view, we would say that that everything that we are talking about is abiding by code of good shooting practice. And actually, from what we are doing in approaching Minister, we've got an appointment to go and see her on the 21st of October. And we have a publication out called The Knowledge, on the back of which we have a self-certification scheme. So we are proposing to her that to avoid any of these type of situations where people may be deemed, because you're going to have those that do things exceptionally well, well and those that do things poorly, potentially. And for us to assist the government in working a, a way forward to make sure that the best biodiversity outcomes come out of shooting in Wales, that we can put into place uh, and promote the self-certification schemes. In terms of where we are in the year, does it mean that there will be, on these three places in particular that we're talking about, will there be no shooting this season or are we talking next, the the, sort of the next round next year? I think it's this season. I think they've been holding back on these three leases and they haven't granted them. So I think it's pretty much immediate. Okay. And... uh, Going forward from here, apart from you know, what you've just said about the, the meeting that you've got coming up, how can this go forward in a positive way? What what would you like to see happen? Is this reversible? Because it seems like the decision's already been made. Yeah, so I, it, it's, it is a tricky situation in that shooting on the public estate may not be the easiest way for us to engage with the general public um, in shooting anyway. So maybe it is one of those tricky situations where we would much rather engage with the public and invite them into situations where they understand what's going on rather than just falling over a situation where people are shooting with no understanding of what's going on, which may happen on a public estate. Um, So it's tricky, but on the other hand, I don't believe from the people that we do talk to and we have engagement with in the general public, when we have these conversations, the general public do not seem to have this strong feeling against shooting. It doesn't seem to be something that they're driving. It is just a minority group. Potentially, you know, there's a lot of the the rural population now, I think, all over the world, feeling as if they're being victimised by a a sort of middle-class urban population who are putting morals and ethics in a way where where is only their narrow understanding and not taking on board anything, which is the sort of cultural and social heritage of a rural population. 
Yeah, well, we, I guess uh, all we can do right now uh, um, is watch the space, see what the outcome of your meeting is. In terms of uh, what shooters can do, uh, what people who, who people who hunt are involved in the countryside can do to be engaged in this, is there anything online, any kind of petitions that are in place, or are you encouraging people to write to the minister? What is what is the advice that, that the GWCT currently have? My advice always is to communicate with your assembly member, your AM in Wales, um, and whether that is through a letter or going to see them at one of their local surgeries, that definitely has the strongest impact is to actually see their constituents speak strongly about how strongly they feel about the need to continue with this in Wales and the good that is done. And the other thing is to lead by example and to put those examples out there in front of the public so that people can understand and see what it is that we are doing and how we provide positive outcomes into the community. Is there any merit in, in people from other parts of the country trying to involve themselves and, and maybe not maybe not vi- visit uh, their members of parliament, being that Wales can be quite a long way away for some people, especially up here in Scotland, but certainly writing emails? Or do you think that might be detrimental to uh, the work that you're trying to do to have a reasonable discussion? I think my my concern is that something that has started off affecting few people, if we're not careful, we could blow this up into something that could be made into something that gains momentum and plays into the hand of hands of the League Against Cruel Sports and those type of organisations who are looking for sensationalism. And it's really hard, I feel, to fight this kind of sensationalism It's a slow burn what we are trying to do in educating people and bringing people along with us. And our communication is far harder to do than theirs in a way. Theirs is very easy to sensationalise, whereas it is going to be a far harder job for us to put our science out there to explain the good that has been done through this. And if this snowballs into something far more serious, um, you know, that that would be a bad thing. And at the moment, the minister is purely talking about shooting on government property, on publicly owned land. Um, And I wouldn't want to make this about any more than that at the moment. Sure. Uh, Sue, thank you very much for your time. I think you've uh, certainly explained what's happened and why we're in the position that we're in now. And I think everyone just needs to keep a a close eye on it and make sure they understand the events that are unfolding. And and best of luck with with your meeting later this month. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Brian. In the interest of wanting to keep you all as up to date as possible, We spoke to Sue again a day or two after we recorded that podcast and it seems like one of the three syndicates in question who had the shooting on this public land has actually been given a 12-month extension so that they can find other shooting possibilities for them. Thanks for listening to the show, be it brief today. If you would like some more information or find out anything about our products or different ways to listen to the show, head over to all the W's, thepacebrothers.com. It has everything there. And if you are listening or you're a new listener and you're trying to figure out the best way to listen to podcasts, uh, we are on Spotify. I've actually had three people ask me in the last week uh, if we are on Spotify, and we have been. We were actually one of the first shows on Spotify. Yeah. Um, Daryl got in there early. We, we got the, in there early. You have to be accepted. To. You, you have to be accepted. And when I first applied to go on Spotify, they, they check your show, and it was actually to do with... Um, listener numbers and that who got on first so thank you for everyone that listeners and uh they put us on and i think it was two months after they opened it up to everyone to apply because it was only a certain number of people that could and so many people applied there was almost a four month five month backlog to get podcasts that. on oh. spotify because that many people were trying to get on but we were on there first so all good but yeah so we are on spotify though, so that's i think now one of our second, second i think it's biggest, the second biggest yeah. second biggest uh obviously itunes most of you are probably listening on that. There's also Stitcher. Uh, we have made an amendment to SoundCloud. So, in fact, that's quite important. If you are listening on SoundCloud and wondered why 
you're not seeing many of the shows anymore. That's because we no longer um, have all of our shows on SoundCloud because it was a ridiculous amount a year. It was like £180 to host uh, your show on there and you didn't really get anything for it that all of the rest of them that I've just listed off there don't give you for free. Uh, And people that were listening on SoundCloud typically were people that were listening on a desktop. So if you're on a desktop, you have access to Spotify and YouTube and all these other things that you can have access to. So if you're a SoundCloud user, I encourage you to migrate to something else. But But, but the most recent shows will be But the most recent show will be on there, but you just won't get the back catalogue. It's just just the way it is. Very good. Well, you're going to be hearing from us very soon. (laughs) You only have to wait seven days until the next podcast. We'll be in Ireland when it's out. But yeah, hopefully we have signal to release it or we can schedule it. I'm going to be scheduling yeah. that. We are, we are off to Ireland. Well, Daryl's off way f- tomorrow night. I'll be joining him a few days later and we're going to have, I think, what is going to be a very eventful week. And with any luck, we're also going to generate a couple of podcasts out off the back of it as well. It will be it'll be interesting because we have no idea what's going to go. Yeah, I, I, kind of, I kind of have half an idea of what's happening, but that that's, uh, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Only half an idea. See you next time. Yeah.